Trayton Lapsovich, thanks for taking time out, uh, heading into the Snowball Derby. This is going to be your first attempt. I know you've done the Snowflake before. Uh, how big of a deal is this for you to be running the Snowball Derby this year? Uh, it's a really great opportunity, honestly. Um, this year, uh, we had a great season in the Pinties, um, and just a lot of momentum carried over from that. Um, we were able to make it happen where we could uh, – a lot of great sponsors came on board, and we were able to build a new car and uh, get to the Snowball Derby. So um, just – I think there's no better time to do it. Um, you know, it's going to be my first race in a super late model, but uh, luckily we're going to get the test and then a lot of practice sessions as well. So kind of going to get a good opportunity to know what we have before we get there. But uh, overall, I'm just, I'm really excited to get there. Yeah, definitely. And what would a win in the snowball derby mean to you? You said you had such a good season so far this year. It'd be the continuation of the good season with a win, but what would a win in the snowball derby mean to you? It would be huge. I mean, I, I've won some big races, but uh, I think everyone's aware that there's really no bigger race than the Snowball Derby. So, um, you know, it, it, it'd definitely be really cool if we can go there and win. But, uh, you know, we're just uh, going to see what we have. Hopefully we can uh, compete with the guys up at the top. Yeah. Now, obviously, this is a race, like you said, is huge. It's, it's one of the biggest races uh, in the world as far as the short track world goes. Eric Jones used this race to propel himself to a NASCAR National Series uh career so do you feel like you go out showcase your abilities uh like you've done all year in the Penty series and and kind of open the eyes of some people in the United States that this could launch you to the next step well hopefully I mean I mean that's kind of the plan um right now I'm in a position where I don't even know if I'm going to be in a race car next year so um this is a, a great opportunity for me to to showcase what I can do um, south of the border, obviously, it's a uh, it's definitely a tough race to go to, and uh, you know, with with our own team and uh, being my first race in a super and and you know the snowball derby, so it's going to be tough. But uh, we're all in. I, I mean, I'm I've been in the shop every single night working on the car, and I'm really excited about what we're bringing and what we have. Now you said this is your first ever race in a super. Uh, what have you been doing to prepare for the start itself? Is there any kind of eye racing you can do? Uh, any kind of tapes you can watch? What is it that you pull from to try to prepare for this event? Yeah, luckily we we have a lot of footage from when Caden ran the snowball um, a couple of years ago. I, I was kind of the one running the GoPros for that and whatnot. So it's uh, it's kind of come full circle and it, it was nice to to get all that. That wasn't the plan of it necessarily, but uh, to have it is really nice to, to be able to watch that. And obviously there's a lot of footage on YouTube and, and iRacing helps as well. Um, I've been struggling to get time to to get on iRacing between school and working on the car, but uh, you know I'm really just using all the resources that are available to me. Um, like I said, the the test day is really going to help a lot. Um, it's going to give me uh, basically a full day just to to work on my skills myself, um, learning the track and and learning the car as well. Yeah, and you talked about your brother Caden. Uh, obviously, he's a former NASCAR Penn, he's now NASCAR Canada Series champion as well. How cool is it to have two members of the Lapsovich family that have won championships uh, in that series? And how impactful has he been in your racing journey? It, it really is just a family affair. I mean, uh, racing is a huge family sport, um, you know, to to follow in Caden's footsteps and and win the NASCAR Pinties championship as well. It, it means a lot. Um, when Caden did it, we did it with our own family team. Uh, my dad is crew chief and uh, pretty much just all the cousin, uh, cousins, uncles working on the cars. So uh, really cool to do it then. And then to have my dad as crew chief uh, when I won the championship and Caden was able to have a, a little break. It was very convenient from the busy ARCA schedule there to, to be able to to fly in and uh, and come to the final race for the Pinty Series this year as well. So um, it, it's really cool to have the whole family involved. Um, the Pinty Series has meant a lot to my family um, in regards to my father and, and my uncles as well. So um, it's just it's a, it's a great series and uh, really happy that we can now have two championships in the family. No doubt. Now, obviously, you're both champions, but your season this year was particularly historic. Seven wins. You led more laps this year than anybody in Penty Series history. At what point in the year in 2023 did you look at things and go, you know what, I think this might be a pretty special season? Yeah, I mean, when when we won three out of the first four, I was pretty excited right off the bat. But it's just, you know, these guys are so competitive. There's such a wide variety of tracks and, and skill sets, too. So, um, you know, we we run almost as much uh, as much road courses as we do ovals. So 
Um, for me, coming from an, an oval background and a lot of these guys coming from sports cars and, and road racing backgrounds, it's it's kind of hard to, to be on the same level as them there. But, uh, you know, we we're able to get the win on the road course and, and also run top five at a bunch of them as well. So there was never really a point in the season where I could just relax and, and know that I had it in the bag. The, the only time um, that really happened was after we took the green at Delaware. But, uh, you know, you, after winning for three of the first four, we had a lot of momentum. I, I knew the season had potential to be really special. And uh, luckily, the, the 22 racing team just kept preparing me amazing cars and, and everything really w went our way. Um, I mean, luck's a big part of racing. And, and I'd say we, we had a lot of it this season. Definitely had good luck, but you also had great speed week in and week out. Uh, it's surprising me. You said you've got no plans for 2024 yet. Have you had conversations with people? Even, I mean, I would imagine any team in the the Canada series has got to be going. Well, heck, he's a free agent. Can we get him in here? Because that was just an incredible season you just came off of. What what do you have kind of in the in like that you're cooking for next year? I, I think the the big thing is funding. Um, I mean, we've uh, you know, there's opportunities for me to go south and and opportunities for me to return to the Pinty series as well. But uh, you know, it wasn't a secret at the start of this past season that we didn't have enough funding to to complete the full year. Um, and it's been difficult the last three years, really. Um, we've been grinding hard to get sponsors. I, I've, I'm in heavily involved in that myself and, and talking to partners and, and doing all the marketing materials. But uh, it's been tough. Um, it's tough to do it again next year. I mean, the, the prices just keep rising and rising. Um, and, and to return to the Pinty Series next year just doesn't quite look feasible. Um, right now, I, I think... Uh, we're going to try and see what we can come up with. But like I said, there's, there's talks, um, but just, you know, nothing, nothing currently. Man, that's so interesting. I, I just, I, I find that hard to believe, hard to fathom that that could be even a possibility. It's just wild and the political climate and uh, the, the, the whole thing we have going on right now that people can't get the, can't get the opportunities based on what they did on the actual racetrack. So that's pretty crazy. But uh, you know, things between you and your rival, uh, Mark Antoine Cameron, have been very, very chippy uh, over the last few years. What kind of triggered things between you guys, and and how sweet is that to come out on top of him in, in that championship battle this year? I think uh, you know the the first couple of years I was in the Pindy series, I was actually I was teammates with Mark my first year, so um, it was it was pretty level headed there. And then the the following year, uh, we never had too many problems, but then I, I think it kind of triggered at. Uh, I would say it started right from the get go this year at sunset. I mean, there was a, there was, a, we had a really great run at sunset, but it was almost hindered by, by Mark on um, the final restart. He, he kept jacking me up on the restarts because um, I mean, that, that was when he was taking his shot to, cause he had a chance on me. Um, but uh, yeah, it was kind of, we were a little frustrated with that at sunset. Obviously we were able to come out on top. So it, uh, it worked in our favor, but, uh, and then, I uh, carried into uh, CTMP and then Chaudier as well. But uh, since then, it's kind of calmed down. I, Mark has been re really great um, communicating with me um, the uh, in the latter parts of the season. Um, I, I would say the the rivalry is is settled down for the most part. Um, you know, Mark congratulated me at the end of Delaware, which was which was really nice. Um, you know, he had a great year last year, and then. I think he he made it pretty clear that he understood this year was our year. So uh, really cool for that to uh, to happen. That's good to hear that you guys have kind of put things behind you because there for a while it was looking pretty ugly on social media. And I was like, man, like this is pretty, pretty intense down there. So really, really cool to see that uh, you guys let bygones be bygones. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 just racing. Uh, I mean, there's uh, there's times at the track we're all really passionate. We're all spending a lot of time, a lot of money. Um, there's times at the track where um you know, the, the emotions can get the best of us. And I, I would say that's happened on both sides. Um, we're both there gunning for wins. Um, and you know, it just happens. Contact's inevitable. Um, rivalries are gonna, gonna happen, especially when I think we both realized that we were both each other's biggest competition at a, at a lot of the tracks. Um, Mark's amazing on the road courses and they've also got a, a really good oval program as well. So, um, definitely always saw Mark as a threat, really, wherever we go. And I think he saw the same in me as well. So that's just kind of where that rivalry transpires from. No doubt. Now, obviously you had a really good season so far this year. Cole Busher, another Canadian uh, born drivers had a really good run, uh, season uh, at the local short tracks this year. How do you feel the chances are for a Canadian born driver to win the snowball derby this time around? Yeah, I think, like you said, um, Cole's had a great year. I've been kind of following it uh, as much as I can. He's 
been running the ASA stuff there and, and just came up short to Ty Majeski in the championship. So, um, you know, it's never a bad thing when you come up short to Ty Majeski. Uh, I would say that's uh, if I was going to finish second to anyone in late model stuff, that would probably be the guy. So um, I, I think it's looking great. Cole's obviously in, in great equipment and, uh, you know, he's got experience in the snowball in the past. And then, you know, like I said, I, I'm pretty confident in what we're bringing down. I'm obviously going to have a, a better outlook on that after testing, but uh, you know, I, I know that there was no expenses spared on this car. Everything's best of the best. Um, I feel like I've prepared myself as, as about as well as I can heading to the track. Um, and then it's really just performing when we get there. Now you talked about keeping tabs on Cole Butcher uh, throughout the year while you were doing your own championship race. Is it one of those things where you see another guy from Canada and you just kind of got to root for him when they're, when they're running in America, just trying to make their way up through the, through the ranks too. Yeah, I think so. I mean, yeah, I think it's no secret that Canadians haven't really got a chance to showcase the the talent that's up here in the competition. I mean, the uh, the competition, the NASCAR Pinty Series, I don't really think it's enough credit, um, especially with the diversity of tracks that we run. Uh, it's difficult, and there, there's a lot of talent up here, uh, as is there's a lot of talent out east, too, where Cole comes from. Um, you know, a lot of guys have really nice equipment out there. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's part of it. I'm uh, just rooting for the fellow Canadian and, uh, you know, I, I always like seeing a, a Canadian get a shot to, to showcase what they can do. Do you feel it's time for more Canadian representation in the NASCAR national series? Like you said, the, the racing in the Penty series has been some of the best over the last few years and the talent there is pretty incredible. Do you, do you think it's time for more representation? I, I really do. Um, obviously as I was talking about my own career earlier, it's just, funding is such a big problem. I mean, I, I would say that there hasn't been a Canadian recently that's really gotten a, a great shot in the NASCAR national series. I mean, Alex LeBay has been doing amazing with what he's had for the last couple of years. And I think there's no doubt if he were to get a shot in, in better equipment, especially on a road course, he would uh, be a really big threat to win. But uh, yeah, I, I think it would be great overall for there to be more Canadian representation regularly um, in more competitive equipment in the national series. Excellent. Now, aside from your, your snowflake attempt, uh, have you had any other experience at five flag speedways in the past? No, I haven't. Uh, the, the snowflake race was actually my first race in the, in the States in a full bodied stock car. And, uh, that was the last time I've been there. So other than I racing, that's, uh, that's the only time. What do you feel is the, the unique challenges that this track presents based on your one experience there? Um, the track itself, I mean, it's, it's a fast track. Um, so, and the corners are very wide and sweeping. So it's all about carrying the momentum, but, uh, the surface itself doesn't have a ton of grip. Um, so that really comes into play, uh, especially in the long runs too. I noticed during the snowflake race, you, you really had to conserve that right rear because you can shut it off really quickly, but, uh, you also have to have a good enough car in, in qualifying to where you can rotate the center, but still have drive off. So it's all about finding that balance. Um, and, uh, that, that's really just the hard part is, is finding that perfect balance in the car to, to not only where you can qualify good, but, but also race good. No doubt. And you talk about qualifying, you've got to make the event first. This is a huge field every year. That's always a big challenge is just making the event that in itself can be a championship winning thing for, for drivers. that are trying to make this race. If you do make the field, which I'm obviously you're expecting to make the field, what is ideally a, a decent day? What would you walk away from the snowball derby feeling like, okay, I didn't win, but this is pretty good. Yeah. I mean, obviously the first goal for the weekend is to make the field. Um, and then uh, from there, I, I think, I think, you know, as, as long as we can complete the 300 laps, hopefully be up there competing at the end. I mean, a lot of these snowballs, um, when it comes down to the last little bit of the race, it's almost anyone's game. So if, uh, if we can make it to the end and, and have a good day, um, be up front competing up there at the end, I, I think that would, uh, would be a success in itself. Excellent. Well, Trayton Lapsovich, thanks so much for taking time out. Best of luck in the upcoming snowball derby. It'll be uh, cool to see how you, uh, how you mix it up out there. Thank you. Thanks for having me.